Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated, and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. As always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. Welcome to the Well Woman Show. I have Suchinta Abiratna here with us today. I'm so excited to talk to you. And me too. Um, it's a mutual. Thank um, you. Yes. So Suchinta, I want to introduce you to the audience. You have um, experienced, studied, practiced, and taught energy healing since 1995, so over 20 years. And you developed your own transformational self-care system called the Creative Holistic Integration Um system and it integrates a variety of energy healing tools and processes that actually helped you heal your own health challenges including cancer and stroke so that's amazing i definitely want to hear about that and the listeners will too and suchinta you were born and raised in sri lanka and immigrated to the u.s in 1971 so i want to give you a great big warm welcome to the well woman show thank you thank you i'm delighted to be here Okay, I feel like I have so much to talk to you about. First of all, I met you with um, one of the most amazing women I've ever met, uh, Judy Norsegian, who's the founder, one of the founders of Our Bodies Ourselves and the Boston Women's Collective, and just has been a true leader in women's health and rights. And she brought you to my retreat last year. Oh, what a amazing, amazing event that was. Yeah, I was very pleased to have been. I, that that was about um, two months after I had a stroke. So I think I was still with my walk. Yeah, I, you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I met you there, and then um, we've continued to stay in touch, and I'm, I'm just fascinated by uh, what you've developed and and what you're sharing with the world. So I want to start by um, just digging in a little bit to who you are. And I know your name is carries a lot of story and history for you and your life and your family. Can you talk about your name? Sure. Well, you know, I was given my name. I think it was my father who uh, chose the name. And it's uh, Suchinta. Uh, means pure consciousness. <laughs> and Abhiratna, which is my, my uh, family of origin name, uh, means a, like, I, I guess a gem that makes you fearless. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so that's, that's yeah, a lot but, to live up to. Oh, oh, and my, my married name is Vijay Surya, which means the victorious sun, S-U-N, sun. So, yeah. Wow. So you have a lot of, um, a lot to live up to in, in all of that, don't you? Do you feel, do you feel that? Yeah, 
I think I do. I think I think the name when I was a little, I, I really didn't like the name because it was very uh, un, very uncommon even in Sri Lanka. So it was always mispronounced, and they always called me something other than Suchinta. Uh, so yeah, and then I kind of didn't like it, but then I definitely have grown into it. I think. <laughs> Yes, and it seems very aligned with the work that you are doing in the world, which I definitely want to talk to you about. Um, I usually start off asking my guests, you know, what are you working on and how does it impact the lives of women? Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, what women tend to have this sort of thing about not recognizing. I love that you guys have like the, the superpower thing. Because I, th- I think we don't realize how incredibly powerful we are. Uh, and, and not just we are now, but we always have been. And I'm quite sure that we always will be. Uh, so uh, what, you know, what I feel and how I feel I serve women is in the work that I, I do, it's actually more educational, like teaching people to find the, the, the superpower within themselves that can enable them to heal and transform and be who they came here to be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it's, it's definitely, I mean, most of my clients and students are women. Um, and, I have, okay, and do you, uh, when you say find that superpower, do you, do you sort of treat it like one one superpower or are there many in your work or how does that work? I mean, there, there's many because in order to sort of care for and heal and transform yourself, you, you need like, you need to pull out all the stops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the one that, that people like have, oh, well, it's men and women, I have to say, don't realize is that we, you know, that we have, like when we are sent, these challenges, we we give away our power to people like doctors or whoever. Not that that there isn't a place for that, but you, there's more. There's so much more that you can do for yourself. And my life has been so. It's been an experience of of finding that you know that power in myself. Uh, so yeah, so regardless of what comes along, uh, I've always been able to find the thing within me that that can help me pull out of it. Well, you know, it's so interesting because with the Well Woman Life um, transformational framework that I developed, and I actually presented it at the retreat that you were at. Yeah. Um, I talk about four stages of the well woman life cycle and in each stage, there is one major superpower that needs to be activated in order to move through that stage. And, and then there are tools that you can use in order to activate that superpower. And so the four superpowers, um, just for the listeners as a refresher are awareness, intuition, action, and love and uh or acceptance i call it but it's really love and so let me say that again awareness intuition action and acceptance and i i feel like your tools for self-care i mean self-care is such a huge part of what we talk about with well woman life and 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 sometimes it becomes really vague and ambiguous and sort of like, well, you know, what exactly are we talking about? And and you provide really concrete tools that can be used to activate um, these four superpowers that I'm talking about in the Well Woman Life Cycle. And you lay it out in your own book um, that I would love for you to share, um, you know, how you came up with that, that your transformational system and what, and if you would like, you know, describe it. Okay. Well, uh, I sort of started on this journey, journey, 
uh, when see okay I, I started studying Reiki because my you know every every joint in my body was just hurt uh, and this went on for years and and allergies and I mean you name it I was sneezing and itching and coughing and all of that and finally I was like I need to do something and I was living in Israel I had just arrived in Israel my husband used to work for US uh, the Agency for International Development, USAID. And uh, I, I was also at the time working as a contractor for USAID. So I arrived there, and uh, within the first week of getting there, uh, <laughs> literally this person came to the door, uh, <laughs> inviting me to come and experience, uh, or come, come to the Kabbalah Center, and honestly, it was like something out of the, you know, like biblical. I, 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 and when he said that, I had just arrived. I had just been to a gallery, and I, and every piece of art that I was drawn to was Kabbalistic art. And I was so freaked out, my knees went weak. And <laughs> and, and and then, uh, but it was too freaky to even like follow up. So then I ended up, like three months later, got a job with USA. The Kabbalah Center was two blocks away from where the office was. So I was like, okay, no turning back from here. And everything was in Hebrew, and I, at that I had taken Hebrew classes. And I was able to go and, you know, and uh, when I asked them, what do they have in English? The only thing they had was Reiki. And I was like, oh, I had just heard the word from somebody like two months before that. And, and I said, okay, yeah, I'm signing up for that. And so I did. So I was, you know, I used to work in Gaza in the West Bank and we, with the Palestinians. It was a really interesting job. Mm. <laughs> wow. uh, and it was a very interesting time in, in you know, I, I guess the history of, um, of that region. Anyhow, there we were. And I came to, to the Reiki class. And basically, for the first time in years, I was able to sit at work. Or, you know, I, like on the way, I would do Reiki on myself. And I could actually get through the day without taking, I wasn't taking any hard, you know, pain drugs or anything. Uh, but I had, I was living on Tylenol and things like that. Uh, for the first time in, Many many years, I was able to uh, to go through the day without without pain and all of that. This was the beginning of the journey, uh, but then after about five and a half years in Israel, I came back. When I came back to the states, uh, that's when I was hit with cancer, <laughs> and three years later, the st a stroke in 2013. At least in when was it? In 2003. So, yeah, so this whole thing with the self-care came about uh, because that's what I had, I had to do. I, like, you know, healing, mm -hmm. it had to come from within me. And, uh, and I realized that nobody else could help me as well as I could help myself. And then down the road... Well, then in 2003, I had, I had a very, very minor stroke, uh, a hemorrhagic stroke, and I basically two days later walked out of the hospital. Uh, this is in Virginia. I was living in Virginia at the time. And, uh, you know, when you take matters into your own hand, help shows up. It's when we doubt and then we just give away our power, then we lose it. But if you're willing to you know, to jump in, uh, people, and I mean, the, I, I got through cancer with the help of an intuitive, uh, because I was like, no, I'm not putting poison in my body to, <laughs> to well, and, and the thing is, it was very early, and this intuitive woman basically could actually see into my body, tell me what was going on, and, and help me discern what I needed to do. And I used probably less than five uh, ounces of a herb that had been used by Native Americans to, uh, to clean the blood and so on. Uh, and yeah, three months later, 
I was fine and I have been fine ever since. So, you know, so, so it, it just took uh, that little step of courage to say, you know, this sounds really crazy, but I'm going to go with it because there's something little, there's a little something inside of me that's saying, yeah, do it. And, and yeah, that's kind of been the thing. And okay, and uh, about the book, uh, I wrote the book because I felt that, especially, you know, women, but some men as well, the women tend to be helping other people, taking care of our kids, taking care of, you know, if they're teachers, or, like whatever we do, we always seem to put other people before ourselves. And I said, the, you know, the golden rule doesn't say, Love yourself, no, love, love your neighbor better than yourself. Because if you don't love yourself and you don't care of your, take care of yourself, you can't do as good a job with the other people that you're working with. So that's, that's why I specifically focused it for caregivers. And it not, not, you know, people who are taking care of sick people or anything, them included, but yeah, but it's, I think, for all of us. And it, I think I wrote it for myself. Yeah, yeah, we usually do that, don't we? Yeah, we tend to create what we need in the world. And so you probably did write that for yourself, but it turns out that it's very um, good for other people, too. <laughs> so um, so very briefly, um, I just want to say that, so the book is Self-Care for Caregivers. And as you just said, uh, the way you define caregiver it's self-care tools and the reason why i focused it on the tools is that these the self-care tools are the ones we are kind of you know we are born with we're hardwired with them most of the time we don't know we have them so like you can't use what you don't have and even if you know you have them Unless you're, you know, particularly intuitive and you kind of figure this out yourself, uh, you may not know how to use them. And, uh, and because we are hardwired with them, it is so simple. It just takes minutes. So it's like using your, you know, using visualization uh, and nothing that somebody else puts in your head, but, you know, something that you can do for yourself. Uh, and, uh, you know, just using your hands and your voice and things that we, are, we just have that we just don't know. I mean, we never taught these things. And so I just kind of took it on myself to, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of study around the energy healing and stuff. I have my doctorate. Uh, it's a doctorate in, in holistic theology, but it was really focused on health. Um, and... Actually, from everything I gathered from that experience of, and, and, the, and the really in-depth study of both uh, energy, energy healing and energy medicine, as well as trans, transpersonal and transformational psychology, that was sort of, those are the things that I was focused on. Uh, these, and I, 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 I think I, I have to say I have a superpower of being able to take like seemingly complicated things and presenting them very simply mm. it comes really easy. And that, and so the tools are basically the first part of the thing, the things that I can teach in a book and yeah. people simply practice. But there's another part, which is the deeper stuff, the emotional and the, you know, the, there's emotional, ancestrally, there's a lot of stuff. And the second part of the book uh, basically are stories from people who have experienced this. And, uh, you know, it, it, because it's a little bit too complex to yeah. try in a book. So the second part is what uh, people have to come, and the second part is the processes. The tools are, we already have. The processes are things that I've developed, and, you know, and, and people can then, uh, start learn through workshops. I do it online. I do it in person in and in, 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 in Santa Fe. So uh, I can work out of my home as well. And so it's called self 
uh, self-care tools for caregivers. And as you said earlier, um, you define caregivers very broadly, which is how we define it on the Well Woman Show. Um, you know, women are are caring for all kinds of people. It's not just it's not just the the traditional narrow definition of caregiver. And um, so it's available on uh, online, and we'll put the link in the show notes at the end. Um, and Suchinta, I want to move into the segment called Superpowers for Success and ask you a few questions that I always ask my guests. The first question is, what does success in life mean for you? Uh, for me, I think success, you know, I've, I've sort of gotten past that point in my life where, you know, the career and all of that. I've, I've, I've had all of that as a Montessori teacher. Then I went on to be uh so that part, for me right now, at this point in my life, uh, it is really being able to, uh, to fulfill what I f- feel is my purpose in life right now. <laughs> I, I feel like I've looked death in the face so many times and like, you know, <laughs> gone, you know, gone beyond that. And I think I think there's a reason why I'm hanging in here uh, yeah. <laughs> at six to six. And so for me, the success is I the success for me is to see myself getting through these challenges, and also to see other people getting through the challenges. I mean, honestly, that has so much joy for me. You know, when I share something and somebody takes it and runs with it, and then totally transforms their life to me that that would be that I consider that right now is my success. And Suchinta, when did you know you were really good at what you do? Oh my God. I think uh, from, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm primarily a teacher. And so like from, from the time from kindergarten, I'd come home and I'd like teach my dolls and uh, I really, and then, and then I was a Montessori teacher and I could tell, and I love that that uh, system because it allowed me to be who I am, and it allowed the kids, you know, to explore and not be stuck in a seat, and all of that. And uh, and I could see that allowing them to explore and you know express themselves was really I I I, I knew it's wonderful because yeah you know, my my. First students are like in their 50s, their early 50s now. And they're still in touch quite a bit. And they remember things that I have long forgotten, but they remember things that I did with them at that point. And it wasn't numbers and letters or anything. But like part of it, it was like small little things that helped them, you know, do something that they didn't think that they could do. And so I think I, I'm still like that with people. And I love, honestly, I just am really, really, I just love uh, sharing information and, and supporting people you know, on this healing journey. So yeah, I'm just doing it at a later stage in my life and, and the people that I'm serving. So. so you have, you know, had this thread throughout your life of being a teacher and now you're fulfilling your sole purpose as a teacher of your of your transformational system and your tools and your process. Um, so really, it was there all the time. It's just that it's shown up in different ways. Yeah. Yeah, I've always been in this kind of role of sharing information. And it's not actually just teaching my system but it's really like helping helping people or helping women find that creative part of themselves that can serve them in being you know in just being the best person that that they they can be so yeah that's it it's not just the the system but it's just seeing that transition take place in them Okay. Um, the next question I might already, we might have already covered, but let me ask it. What superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? 
I yeah, I, I think um, <laughs> I, I think it was well. First of all, it was like this compassion, this ability to connect with people. Um, I think I've always had that, and I, I just I really saw that much around the world. And you know, no matter as I was able to connect with people in, in this uh, empowering kind of way. Uh, so that was the first one. The other one was this ability to to share to share information in different ways, whether it was for healing or whether it was learning to you know read and write and do math or whatever. I that, yeah. So it was this ability to share information. And Suchita, what advice would you give your twenty five year old self? Oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, okay. I would say to believe in myself, to to be a or to listen to that inner voice. That's what I didn't do at twenty five, and I'm oh, I was fairly recently started doing is listen to that inner voice and trust it. Mm. And and the voice is coming from the heart. Yeah, isn't yeah. it amazing? Like, it takes us so long to figure that out. And actually, it was there all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Suchin, did you identify as a feminist? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, for years, I've been working in women's health. That's how I know. Okay. Can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Better. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's how I know Judy from, because I was living in the Philippines, teaching childbirth education and breastfeeding and all of that at that time, having given birth to my second child at home. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I connected with the uh, Health Book Collective when they came. Judy was uh, pregnant with Kira, but they came... Uh, Norma and Judy's mom, Agnes, came to the Philippines and I hosted them. And that was the beginning of this amazingly beautiful relationship. Uh, oh, we're, we're practically family now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and last question. What are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? Oh, my gosh. Uh, what's on my nightstand is a book called... Uh, it's it's about brain retraining and it's called oh god it's I, I I get the t- title and the crazy thing is that one of the sensitivities that I have is to paper don't even ask paper which means I have to wear gloves <laughs> to read. I, have, I have to wear leather gloves to read uh, and so I have to I'm doing this very very you know slowly but it's about uh, it's called wiring. And it's about re, it's about the uh, retraining the the limbic system to not give your body these crazy you know messages that it's giving, and to retrain it to retrain your brain. Well, that's actually the, the 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 sort of the DVD course I'm following now. It's called retrain. It's uh, the dynamic neural retraining system where. And I just started last week. And this is to help me get through the the, e- the electromagnetic field sensitivity and these other crazy sensitivities that I've developed months after I had the stroke. I've got pretty much gotten over the stroke right now. But this has come up later. And so that, yeah, so I'm really, I'm really involved in that uh, right now. And it's just... Yeah. I have to practice. It's all about practice. It's about uh, giving these messages to your brain. Okay. Yeah. And if you send me the name of, if you send me the name of the book that you're reading, we'll put it in the show notes for the listeners so they can link to it. I will. I will. Uh, and and the name of the author is. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Just send it later. Um, yeah. And we will put all of the links to your book and to the things we talked about in the show notes for listeners after the fact. And um, 
If you're watching on YouTube, you can look underneath in the links. If you're listening on the podcast, um, you can go to wellwomanlife.com slash podcast to find okay. the latest episode and um, and all the links will be there. I want to thank you so much, Suchinta, for being on the show today. Oops, you're cutting up, Jamana. Yeah, I think it was cutting up. Okay, I, I didn't hear that last. I just was thanking yeah, you for being but on I the just, show today. Uh, and thank you. And I w- just want to remind uh, you and the listeners about the the sound healing thing that I sent, the little, uh, you know, the little gift that I sent. Yes. Uh, them to make use of as you can like you know do this do the toning in the shower while driving you can do it like anytime while you're walking and just have fun with it and it's it's a deeply healing very deeply healing exercise and balancing and so on oh wonderful okay and that's available the for for free to download at wellwomanlife.com slash podcast and just look for suchinta's interview thank you so much Thank you. And it was a pleasure meeting with you. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your well woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wellwomanlife. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.